Now, Kamala Harris has gone a whopping 30 days without holding a press conference since being tapped to handle the Biden-Harris self-inflicted border crisis, and it is a crisis, and conditions on our southern border are worsening by the hour, and federal law enforcement now is speaking out as a DHS whistleblower spoke to our own Sarah Carter and exposed just how out of touch Joe Biden and Kamala Harris really are. You saw him criticize the Biden administration last night. Here's a new clip. What would be your worst fears? The worst fears is that we have too many people to process and not enough people to do our job. Because what can happen? Well, anything can happen, but um, it certainly just um, makes it ripe for the bad players to have more success and become stronger. But of course, the mob, the media, they're doing everything they can do to help the Democrats and downplay and dismiss what is an undeniable border disaster. For example, Politico following the Associated Press is apparently forbidding reporters from using the word crisis when writing about the crisis at the border. Here now with reaction, joining us, Republican Congressman Devin Nunes, along with former White House senior advisor Stephen Miller. Devin, I'll start with you. We see the conditions. Texas is now suing, rightly, the Biden administration because they're allowing all these kids in Biden's cages that are overflowing and they're living on top of each other with a high rate of positivity for COVID, uh, suing the that COVID protocols that they put on everybody else are, are not even being practiced here. Yeah, so Sean, I was actually just down there a couple of weeks ago. I'm gonna be out there uh, here in about 10 days again on the California border. And what's happening here, it has nothing to do with anything, but it's their own fault. This is very clearly what, instead of having to file for asylum, in your own country, like the Trump administration was having him do, it's a free-for-all. It's almost like there's a deal between the Biden administration and the drug cartels who are moving these people. Uh, this is why the Border Patrol and the folks that work at the Border Patrol, it's why they want to be undercover, because they're doing very difficult work out there having to process all of these people, and they're completely overrun. When I was there, there were not only just the hundreds of kids that you see that were without parents. This was in one day. There were thousands of others. The day that I was there, 3,500 people went over just in the, the small region that I was in on the Texas border. You know, Stephen, if you look at what this whistleblower, and by the way, I thought we praised, we praised an anonymous hearsay non-whistleblower. We, we applaud that one. This guy's risking his career because of the gag order that has been imposed on Border Patrol uh, workers and officers. And, you know, here we have a situation at the border that's unfolding. Now, as I look at this whole thing and what this guy is saying is the cartels, the human traffickers, the drug traffickers and the gangs, they now have carte blanche. Well, because all the resources now are dealing with this massive influx of illegal immigrants. Yes, Sean, the cartels and the traffickers use the families and minors that they push across the border by the tens of thousands to create lanes and diversions to get criminals, drugs, contraband, and weapons into the country. That is deliberate and planned and purposeful. And I talk to agents, I talk to Homeland Security professionals at DHS, and they are terrified by the fact that over 1,000 people a day are sneaking across without ever being apprehended. That's in addition to the people who are caught and then released. These people are never Never even caught in the first place. And I will note that my organization, America First Legal, has joined the state of Texas in suing the Biden administration for its illegal policy of mass releasing COVID positive illegal immigrants during a pandemic. And I will say one more thing Kamala, Kamala Harris's refusal to address this issue is one of the greatest derelictions of duty that I have ever seen in my entire life. Well, yeah, let me ask you. Because we're watching this unfold in real time. This, we have, we're supposed to be a nation of laws, Congressman. You are a lawmaker. They're ignoring the laws of the land. And they're, you know, your state is aiding and abetting by being a sanctuary state. Law breaking. 
Joe Biden is aiding and abetting law-breaking. How, how, how come there's no check and balance and, I don't know, if I aided and abetted, you know, somebody jaywalking, I, why would I end up in jail? Well, Sean, I think it's the key to what Stephen Miller just said. His organization is actually trying to get the judicial branch of government to get involved. So as we know, we've had this two-tiered justice system on a, on a whole host and range of issues. Uh, but this is another example. Whenever the left brings something into court, it quickly gets solved. Whenever Republicans bring something into court, it takes forever and it goes slow. So that's why we have to have a legal strategy to actually get the courts to get involved. It's the only way we're going to have to hold that we have to hold Biden and Harris accountable because until 2023, that's the soonest that Republicans could get gavels back in the House and Senate. In the meantime, we have to count on the judicial system to enforce the laws. Last word, Stephen, we have 30 seconds. That's exactly right. Joe Biden is violating congressionally passed law passed over a series of decades, and perhaps even more importantly, by refusing to uphold our laws, Joe Biden is violating the Constitution and his obligation to take care of the laws be faithfully executed. And the courts can and should enjoin his lawless conduct and order him to enforce our borders. All right.